Hey guys, so in the past I had made a video and posted it about um, like scary stories or creepy stories from nursing homes and hospitals and you guys said you wanted to hear more so I have more today for you. Um, this is actually from a Reddit post and these are just like weird and creepy stories from hospital workers. And if you see me looking down, it's because I have my laptop right here. Um, so I'm just gonna read you what these experiences are. And hopefully you guys enjoy, cause like I said, you guys had said that you wanted to hear more. So here you go. Um, this is story number one. It says, I'm an ER nurse. I had an old lady come in by ambulance near death. She was a DNR, do not resuscitate, so we weren't going to do much for her. She didn't have any family that we could find. The hospital was full, so we had to keep her in the ER for the night. Again, she was near death. When you've seen enough people die, there's no mistaking it, and she was almost there. Barely responsive, pale, cool breaths were really irregular. Heart rate was up and down too. We just turned the lights down and kept an eye on her monitor, basically waiting for her to die. About an hour later, she's standing at the door of her room. She'd gotten up and put on all her clothes. We were all like, WTF. One of the nurses went to check on her and she said she was hungry. Not knowing really what to make of things, we got her a chair, a bedside table, and went to the cafeteria and got her a tray of food. Lady sat there, ate all her food, talked with the staff a little. After about an hour, she told her nurse that she was tired and wanted to lie back down. We helped her back into bed and within 30 minutes, she was dead. Not exactly paranormal, but in 22 years in a very busy inner city ER, it's the weirdest thing I've ever seen. So here's the next one. When I was a student, I got called in on a stroke patient. She had coded and they were doing CPR. They worked for 45 minutes, but she died. They cleaned her up and called on the family to say goodbye. By the time the family left, she had been both brain dead and without a pulse for more than 45 minutes. Blood had filled her brain and she was completely gray and started to smell. Suddenly, she sat up and called for her family. The nurses rushed to get monitors and equipment back on her, started working on her again. She stabilized, said goodbye to her family and promptly died for a second time. I think that would be awful. Um, having to say goodbye to someone and having them die and then having them come back just to say goodbye again, um, I think that would be really hard. So here is the next one. I used to work in a skilled nursing facility. I was usually assigned to the Alzheimer's ward. One night I'm in the linen room stocking my cart and I heard someone shuffle up behind me. Then I felt a hand on my shoulder. I turned around and there was no one else in the room. The door was still shut too. Another lady started to complain that a man was coming into her room at night. Again, Alzheimer's, so I didn't think much of it. So to reassure her, I told her I'd check on her throughout the night. She complained of this man every night for two more weeks when I asked her to describe him to me. He's real handsome and wears a black suit. Oh, he's right behind you now, honey. That freaked me out. Of course, there was no one behind me and she died the next night in her sleep. Here is the next one. LPN here, I work in long-term care currently. A lot of palliative residents always claim to hallucinate either small dogs or children eating ice cream before they die. It's always facility specific too. At one facility I work at, I've had about six to seven residents claim to see a little girl eating ice cream, then they die that night. I'm going to find that little shit. She is causing me so much paperwork. I don't know that I wanna put that part in there, but that's what they said. Um, here is number five. About two years ago, we treated patients during a fungal meningitis outbreak. Our acute care floor has a census of 20. During this, at least 10 to 15 were meningitis patients, age ranging from 20s to 90s. There are no shared rooms and all the patients were in isolation, no contact with one another. Many of them had the same hallucinations, children in the corners of their rooms and auditory hallucinations of religious music. And someone else kind of responded to that one and said, I had bacterial meningitis and had similar hallucinations. 
kids' voices talking to me, people walking around my room staring at me like I was naked in a train station. My dad later assured me he was the only one there. It continued randomly for a few weeks after I left the hospital. I put it down to all the drugs they were giving me, but it seriously screwed me up for a while. I think that'd be awful too. Um, number six, in the morgue at my hospital, I would always hear knocking coming from inside the freezer. It really creeped me out, especially when the pathologist looked up, grabbed me by the shoulders, stared me straight in the eye and said, you hear that? You never open that door when they're knocking, never. It turned out to be some loose pipes. He thought it was hilarious, but I didn't sleep that night. Don't you just love that dark sense of humor that healthcare workers seem to have? Um, I could definitely see certain people that I have worked with making jokes like that just to try to freak out new people. Um, number seven, I'm an RN and while I was a student, I was caring for a lady who had end-stage renal failure had a DNR and was shutting down. We were having a little chat when she stopped, looked over my shoulder and said, Bill's here, love, I've got to go, and swiftly stopped breathing. I read her old notes and Bill was her deceased husband. That's sweet. Um, here's the next one. I did my clinical as a CNA in a memory care unit. I helped feed this woman. She never really moved, never talked. It was like she was in a coma or something. I would wheel her into the dining room. I can hardly get any real food in her. I'm able to slide in some special ice cream. For days, she doesn't move or have any response. I'm feeding her and talking to myself pretty much. After about 10 minutes, she slowly turns her head and says, oh, hello. Then she rotates her head back to her blank staring position. That's kind of creepy. I think that would freak me out. <laughs> um, this one says, I used to work in a personal care home. A couple of times, a day or so after a resident had passed, their call bell would go off in their room. No one was in the room when the call bell went off on any of the occasions. We had one resident die pretty traumatically. The nurses had to perform CPR because he was a full code. That night, the midnight staff said they saw him at the end of the hall just walking down like he always did. Then the alarm on the door to the outside, it was a secured unit for Alzheimer's dementia, went off. It was the door he always tried when he was looking to get out. That would kind of make me feel sad um, because I always worry about like people's spirits getting trapped in nursing homes, especially because that's not what I would want. I would not want to feel trapped in a nursing home. Um, I don't want to end up in a nursing home at all, ever but I definitely don't want to feel trapped. And if you don't believe in like spirits and things like that, then just completely ignore what I just said. But I believe in spirits and, you know, I don't, I just wouldn't want that to happen. And I've worried about that at other facilities I've worked at. Um, so here's the next one. I work in a cardiovascular surgical ICU. We have a lot of effed up people, both physically and mentally, that come through our unit. We had a stretch of nights where each corner room of our unit, it is a perfect square, reported seeing a cat walking around. Not a friendly cat either, apparently. The thing was hissing at them. The accounts were so similar to each other, we actually spent probably a half hour looking around for a cat and then had security come look as well. No cat was ever seen or found. Two of those four patients coded the next day. This one says, never anything paranormal, but I had an older patient who kept every piece of paper from every hospital stay. His heart was in bad shape, so I was desperately looking for anything to help our cardiologists out. I finally found his records from when he had heart surgery. It was in Paris, California in the 1980s. I was just reading a book about nurses who became serial killers when sure enough, I see records with the name Robert Diaz. I was the nurse for a man whose former nurse was a serial killer. That'd be kind of crazy. Um, number 12. My town has two really old hospitals. One no longer functions as overnight and the stories are unsettling. No one cleans the old ER alone because all the lights and call bells go off. On other floors, there's a kid with his ball, a lady in a white dress, etc. A coworker was cleaning an entire floor utterly solo, which is the norm, and bounced between rooms because the cleaning solution stays wet for a few minutes. Upon returning to a freshly wiped bed, handprints were clearly visible. That would be kind of freaky too. 
I wouldn't want to do that. I also wouldn't want to be cleaning alone, like the only one on that floor. That would freak me out because every little noise would freak me out in like the middle of the night. Here's the next one. This might get buried and is not really nurse related other than the fact my grandmother's nurse told me. My great grandmother was 94 and just started suffering from dementia. She told the home nurses and me that there was a little boy in the corner of the living room who would taunt and tease my great grandmother while laughing at her, telling her she was going to die. Well, at first it was a little disturbing and we all shrugged it off because of her dementia. But then shit got real when my best friend came over with his little boy who was about three or four. The little guy pointed over to the same corner and yelled, I'm going to beat you up. When we asked him what that was about, he told us that he saw another little boy in the corner and he is not nice. We flipped out. I got shivers just typing this. Maybe Nana wasn't hallucinating. This one says, nurse here. I worked the night shift when a ward patient's relative came running to the nurse's station in a panic. Nurse, come quick, she cried. What happened? You have to see it for yourself. I ran to the ward where this little old lady patient was crying and holding on to the bed for dear life. Her bed was shaking. Now you're probably thinking that the lady was the one causing all that shaking, but she was this frail, practically emaciated thing. She couldn't have barely rattled the bed rails. The ward had only two other patients in it and their respective watchers. Everyone was huddled in a corner, shaking in fright. Apparently that particular ward was seldom used and the bed that old lady lay in was rarely occupied. People who have laid in it complained of nightmares where they hear screams and laughter of angry children. I guess some restless spirit called dibs on that particular bed. God. Um, here's number 15. I worked for a short time as an EMT who spent most of my time with transfers. I had a regular who was an older woman that I took to a dialysis center across town frequently. One day she was being moved and I was in the back with her. She looked under the weather, so I asked what was wrong, and she said a man in purple had been visiting her. I asked if he was a relative or a technician, and she shook her head. She said the man would sit next to her during dialysis and stroke her hair. Thinking this was strange, I asked the dialysis center techs about such a person, and no one had seen or remembered such a person. Visitors weren't really a thing at this center anyway, so I assumed the patient was imagining it. Well, one day we're actually heading to pick her up, and on the way into the parking lot, I see through the window something that chills my heart to think about. It sent shivers up my spine at the time, too, like I immediately recognized it, but I swear to God I saw a man in purple scrubs standing in one of the big windows watching us drive in, and when we pulled out of sight to go to the pickup door, we walked in to see a bunch of techs rushing to my transfer patient. The woman had just suffered a heart attack, and we were unable to revive her even at the hospital she was rushed to. None of the texts in that center wore purple scrubs. And here's the last one. Patient comes in coding and we are working on him and we are getting nothing. So we bring in his wife to say goodbye and she starts yelling at him at the top of her lungs and he comes back. So we arrange transfer to a tertiary hospital and he codes again. So she comes back and yells at him again and he comes back again. Cut to, they are loading him into the helicopter and he codes again, so they bring him back into our ER after working on him for a bit on the helipad, and his wife yells at him again, and once again, he immediately comes back. Eventually, they decide to have his wife ride in the helicopter with him to make sure she can scare him back to life if he were to code again. The guy ended up living and received a heart transplant and is still alive to this day, all thanks to his wife scaring the life back into him. I think that's a good one to end on. Um, yeah, like I said, this was from Reddit and, um, just people sharing their stories. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. If you would like a third video, um, of creepy stories or just weird stories from nursing homes or hospitals or just the medical field in general, please let me know and I can plan to make another one because I do find stuff like this interesting. I am interested in the paranormal. I don't know if you guys are, but I am a little bit. It interests me. Um, so yeah, just let me know and I'd be glad to film something for you. This video has gone on long enough, so I'm going to end it here. If you guys have any other topics you'd like me to talk about in the future, please let me know and I will get something filmed for you. And with that being said, I will see you guys next time.